Welcome back to Bonsai Ann. I'm Josh and today we're going to be performing some pruning maintenance on this Australian native tea tree. So what I've got next to me today is an Australian native tea tree. Here in Australia we just call this a lepto. The botanical name for it is a Leptospermum uh, petersonii. Now, this particular tea tree, um, we usually just call it a lemon-scented tea tree due to the fact that when you break the leaves off and crush them up, they actually have a lemon scent to them and it smells really nice. This particular tree right here, as many of you might know, I do own a bonsai nursery and an online bonsai store. Uh, we've just currently moved the shop and unfortunately, a lot of my trees you know, have just been growing crazy during that period. I haven't had the time to work on them. And this particular one here, as you can see, it's quite overgrown. Um, you cannot see the shape of the tree whatsoever. You can't see any of the branch structure. Um, the one thing that I haven't neglected though, is you can see all the bottom branches are really, you know, grown out, long and leggy. But the apex of the tree, I have actually kept uh, trimmed back as much as I can. This is so uh, the top branches in the tree don't get too thick and out of proportion. Otherwise, I might have to change the design in the tree or start the apex again if that happens. Um, I have had to do that before. So with these bottom ones, you know, getting long and leggy like this and kind of these mid-tier branches that are in here, it doesn't matter so much. Um, all we're really doing here is giving the tree a ton of energy um, and it's the bottom branches that would really be thickening, it, um, thickening up due to this growth. So, you know, it's not as much of a problem. But today, basically, I'm just going to go through and prune these branches back and I'll try and bring the camera in no nice and close and just show you some of the decisions that I'll be making and maybe we can have a look at some tips and tricks along the way. So let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go through and just trim back everything that's super long and leggy. Um, and when I'm, when I'm doing this, um, I'm not just going to willy nilly cut back to anywhere. Um, a lot of the stuff I may actually completely cut off once we get it all cut back. But what I want to do for now is I kind of want to, what I usually do is I try and, you know, with a, a long piece like this particular one that I got here, I don't know how well you can see that, but as you can see at the bottom here, if I can get this guy to stay out of the way, as you can see at the bottom here, we've got this little guy here and this little guy here, and then we've got nothing below that. So for now, what I will do is I would cut back to those two smaller ones, getting rid of all of that, and keeping these two smaller ones here. Now, by actually doing what I've just done there and cutting back to these two smaller ones, by pruning this growing tip off, um, we've actually pushed the hormones back into these two. So these will, these will take off and grow. But what you'll also find will happen on a tree that's got as much energy as this is it's likely to give us back buds down into here. And once we clean up all this foliage and we can get some sunlight and air into this section, it's going to shoot a bunch of buds anyway. But as I said, we may or may not keep this depending, you know, on the decisions we make once we get it all cleaned up because it's really hard to see what branches we've got at the moment. and. You know, just by looking at this section, I can see that there's way too much stuff just in here. Um, we're going to have to go back to sets of two all through here uh, to clean this up. So the first thing we do is just go through and cut out all the long leggy growth, go back to our first two um, buds if we can, and then come back and then we can actually start selecting some of the some of the more important branches to the design. So I'll go through and I'll trim all this and then we'll come back and we'll have a look. All right, so I've gone through and I've pruned back a lot of the long leggy branches that were growing. 
um, as you can see it's still just a bush it's very overgrown um, there's a lot of growth on this tree it's very very healthy um, so my next mission now is to actually go through and do some branch selection and this is going to help thin the tree out a lot because what we've had happen is over the time that the tree's been developing, so a bit, as you can see, it's still in development, it's in a black plastic pot, it will be going into refinement this spring. It'll be going into a bonsai pot, and it'll also be going into an Akadama mix. But while I've been developing this tree, I've been developing the main structure of the branches, so what I mean by that is um, at the end of the video, maybe I might be able to get a shot up underneath the tree so you can see that branch structure. But I've developed out some thicker first branches, thicker on the bottom than up the top. And then I've done some secondary branching and I've just been developing that first and secondary branching, getting it nice and thick um, nice and barked up and then once this tree goes into refinement this season then I can start working on some real fine tertiary branching um, and going from there but what we've got at the moment is on the end of those thick um, first and secondary branches we've just got a massive plethora of just small fine branches that have shot in some section we've got four to five branches which is what's causing this, you know, bush-like appearance. Um, so what I will actually do now is I'll go through and take the end of the secondary branches back down to two shoots, and I'm likely to take those two shoots back down to two to maybe four sets of leaves, depending on, depending on the branch and the silhouette of the tree. Sometimes to keep the bottom silhouette in shape, you've got to leave a couple of extra um, leaves on just to give you that length. But that will be my next plan of action. So I'll go through and do that now and then we'll come back and have a look. And the reason that I'm not, you know, filming this process is because one, it's a very long and tedious process. Um, so it just won't be very entertaining for you guys. So I'll go through. I'll make those branch selections, trim it all back, then we'll come back and have a look. All right, we're back. So I've gone through and done my branch selection, as you can see. Uh, I've actually done a little bit of wiring as well because there was a few sections where there was some, uh, there was some unusable branches and I've had to move other branches um, into some places to fill some gaps and also to um, sometimes we need to twist some branches to, you know, make our ramification lateral again. So that's all been done now. I'll give you a, a quick spin of the tree so you can see kind of what we've done. So a lot more open now. Uh, we can get a lot more sunlight back in here. Um, you know, we do have a little bit of a gap here where I had some branches that uh, weren't usable, but I have bought this little fella in here so he can take over, grow and fill that um, gap out that we've got there. Brought the apex back down a little bit. Um, but overall, the, the trees, um, you know, it, it's on a good path to becoming a bonsai and it's always good to show you guys this this part of the game this is the development part of the game and this this part is just as important as the refinement stage um, if you're skipping all this you know the growing of branches and stuff like that then you're just really not going to end up with a good quality bonsai um, one other thing that i did want to point out with the the tea tree uh, in particular this can also apply to other stuff like melaleuca um I'm just trying to think what else i mean pro probably a lot of the natives and 
what I'm talking about is the fact that the branches are so brittle and they're hard to manipulate into, um, like, if they get too far out of the realm of the design, then they're really hard to manipulate back into position. That's what I was trying to say. Sorry it was so long-winded. But what happens is, I've, ha I've had it a lot with this tree, and you can kind of see an example of it in here, which, I mean, you're probably not gonna be able to see it, but basically what happens is we know that branches wanna to grow towards the light. So if you've got a branch that you let go and go and go and go and go, it's gonna just wanna to grow towards the light. So with this particular design, this is a very traditional Japanese design that I've got on this tea tree. Um, just something that I was trying. I've got a cascade tea tree. Um, I've got tea trees where I've got all the branches wired up. Um, I've just been experimenting with these over the last couple of years, but this particular one, Japanese style, branches down, and what I'd found happened was a lot of those branches wanted to grow towards the light and I ended up with branches that were curving up. Now I can't just come in and put wire on those branches that are going up and then bring them down because they're likely to snap. So with this kind of tree, and I would say with most of our Australian natives, um, you have to you have to really keep an eye on them during that developmental stage when the when the branches are growing really rapidly, and just make sure that you've got them wired into the position you want at a younger age, while they're still flexible, because if you let these if you let these grow and grow and grow and grow, then if it's not roughly in the position where you want it, you're gonna have a hard time getting it there. It can be done, but it's a slow process. You have gotta be really patient with it. And you know, it just, you wanna avoid breaking things if possible. And these do break really easily. So just a bit of a tip for you there when you're working on your Australian natives that have very brittle branches. So, I mean, we have taught it before in some of our developmental lessons that we do things in stages. So you've probably heard us say before that if you want your branches to thicken up in here, then you let the tips run. And then you might say, well, that just clashes with what you just said. You don't want the tips to run because they'll grow up. They'll... But what we need to remember is we do things in stages. So while we're growing this, we're not worrying about what's happening out here. So we let them grow let this thicken and then we come back in we cut right back and then we let our secondary grow let it do its thing come back and cut and then once we start working on our finer branching that's when we don't want to let it get out of control so as mentioned before um, this has been developing for a few years now been developing the trunk um, been developing these first and secondary branches now it's ready to go into refinement. Now it's ready to go into Akadama and we can work on some of this finer growth out on the tips. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Just a short one showing you some of the maintenance work on this tea tree in its development, developmental stage before it goes into refinement and some of the things that we do. If you like the t-shirt I'm wearing, you can pick up your very own at bonsaienmerch.com. I'll leave a link in the description below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe because that helps our channel grow. And you can also head over to www.bonsai-en.com.au to check out our intermediate masterclass which is currently running. We have one live session left but you can go back and watch the previous lessons over and over again. Um, and the next time we run the intermediate class, you'll also be able to join in on that and ask live questions and all that kind of stuff. So jump on board if you'd like to learn more in-depth bonsai. But until next time, enjoy your bonsai journey.